I'm going to give you the tools so that you can never have an argument again. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could walk through life with uh, the ability to never get in a fight? What would your life be like if, if, if no one could draw you into an argument? If, uh, if arguments just rolled off of you like water off of a duck's back, it's kind of like a superpower to be able to go through life and uh, no one to be able to draw you into the drama, for no one to be able to pull you down and sink you down into the issues and drama of life. Uh, we feel awful after arguments with a loved one. We have regret hostility hangovers uh, we regret the things we said we're mad we feel bad because we are not understood uh, ultimately in just about every way i can think of it's it's just uh unhelpful unproductive uh and i think anyone would love to know how to have a relationship with someone without having to argue with them and this isn't just in romantic relationships this is with your friends, family, brothers, sisters, your coaches, your clients, it's, 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 at, it's your coworkers, it's anyone. Um, it's, it's nice to have tools and techniques we can use to avoid getting drawn into an argument. So, so to that aim, with no further ado, uh, I present to you the techniques that you can use to never get in another argument. To do this first, to get started, I'm going to show you an actual example of an argument that popped up on uh, one of my Netflix shows here. Let's, uh, let's watch. I am crazy about you. I hope it resonates. Like the way we film this is so weird. The whole thing is super fast, super uncomfortable, like everything's super intense. And it's tested us, but like I think it's only made us stronger. Yeah, we have all this stuff like going for us, but the one and this is so bad, but like I want you to like know all my thoughts. Like I feel like that's the one thing where I talked to him. I was like, I feel like he, I know, but I'm like, I feel like he doesn't like fully acknowledge that. What do you think are the things that are gonna turn me off or change the way that I feel? Because here we are, and I'm. Still sure. I was thinking, I think how you thought about me because you don't want to talk about how much my family loves you. Like, that's, that's a flaw. Like, I genuinely was like, I was thinking, I was second guessing the touches. I was like, if he's walking into this car not as happy as I am, he's not here for the right reason. That's what I was thinking. And that's why I had to. So you think after three, four, four five, I eight, I don't I don't I No, I don't. When I was so happy about how my family thought about you, I assumed that you would be as happy. And then the second no, like you didn't you complain about your friends right away and I was like, okay, so if all I want to talk about his friends, does he actually like like me for the right reason? There were things that popped up in the day yesterday with my family and my friends that were hard. That were the day of meeting my family. Where yeah, I was like really excited. I know it was selfish to like bring it up when we had just met your family, but it was just on my mind. And I'm very sorry that I ruined what was I know a very important day to you and also me because this matters to me. Mm -hmm. Like if we're gonna get married in two weeks, no, no, that, that, I'm not fucking around. I didn't think you were until after I had my Like that was the only time that I thought maybe you were. Because in the moment I thought that you were gonna Did you ever think the world doesn't revolve around like you? <laughs> oh, okay. The world revolved around me because I was excited about my family and you wanted to talk about your friends. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I've dated people with narcissistic personalities before. And I was like, fuck. Just because we were at your family's house yesterday doesn't mean that, like, I didn't have family texting me and friends texting me and not texting me and things going on. So the world, the world revolves around me because your friends were texting while you were at my house. I, like, I don't understand that. I don't. I'm just saying. Like, I don't fucking get that. And like I said, I apologize to you today. It was wrong that I let that bubble up and ruin that moment on the way home yesterday. And I own that, and I'm sorry that I did that. I was happy for one fucking day. One day. And you're going to be like, oh, the world are all around you. Because I was happy that my family liked you. I'm fucking sorry. Yes. And 
that's how you feel about me, then. Okay. That's fucked up. I have things going on yesterday outside of you meeting your family, okay? Sorry, but like, the way that you're talking to me right now, I can't. I can't do this right now. All right, awesome. So that's a great example of an argument because um, the 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 persons in the argument really, really, really did not want to fight, <laughs> and so they're really trying. Uh, and that's what's great about this argument is it's how is it that when we don't want to fight, we still get in an argument. These two people in this in this uh, series here, if you haven't seen the series, they love each other to death. I mean, they just love each other. But they keep getting in fights and they don't know what is happening. Like, why do we end up in a fight when we love each other so much? So, so just a quick breakdown of what really what really happened there. Um, this starts out all lovey-dovey, like we're excited, everything's going great. And then she says, well, I have a concern that you may not understand my flaws. And so he's like, what are you talking about? You know, I'm going to love you no matter what. She goes and tries to explain her flaw in explaining her flaw, which was the other day, for instance, I was looking at you uh, after you responded this way and did this thing after meeting my family. And I thought something negative about you. He became insulted at the negative distortion that she had about him. And by the way, she suffers from negative distortion. She's no doubt a trauma survivor. He has no idea how to handle such negative distortions. So he gets upset. He's like, what? You think I'm not here for the right reason? Like, what are you talking about? He starts to defend himself. And then she's like, no, no, it's not that. It's not that. That's just what I was thinking. She's trying to explain that this is what I was thinking. This is not that I'm thinking it now. But he continues to feel defensive of himself. And she ends up trying to re-explain her faulty thinking, which makes her basically defend the faulty argument. So now they're both locked into defending themselves. And eventually he says something wrong, which is, have you ever thought the world doesn't revolve around you? At this moment, now he's said something imperfect that she can pick on. So now she says, oh, how could you say something like that about me? She becomes offended. No matter what he says after that, she brings up the statement that he said a minute ago about the world revolving around her like four times. When people are in an argument, they're no longer listening to each other. There is no way that they could get this like reorganized and back on track as long as they were locked in a battle of trying to do what most of us do and the reason why we end up in an argument. And that's try to make a point. We become so dead set on trying to get another person to understand our point that we don't realize we're preventing that person from understanding us at all. The reality of arguments is that when two people are in an argument, the way the tensions are, are high like that, when they're both trying to make a point, no points will be made, no points will be heard until someone decides to stop trying to make a point. Does that make sense? Two people can't simultaneously be making a point at the same time. The only way for to have a productive discussion or conversation is for one person to maybe be talking and one person to be listening. Then it's possible for someone to make a point. It's impossible to make a point when two people are both trying to make their point at the same time. It's very important to understand. The reason why we end up in an argument is because we try to defend ourselves. Why do we try to defend ourselves? It's because someone in the argument, someone always, you're having a discussion, you're sitting down, it can be so chill, you and the other person, and they say something 
that violates your sense of self. They say something that indicates that they don't see you the way you want to be seen. That's always the formula. The argument always starts by them saying something that violates your values at all times. That's the only time you get in an argument. You do not get in an argument about something you don't care about. Guaranteed. Somebody says something about NASCAR, you don't care about NASCAR, you will not get in an argument with them about NASCAR because you don't care. The reason is because they said something that was talking about something you cared about and they violated it. Does that make sense? It could be your political stance. It could be, it could be something about you, your character. So what does she say to him in the argument that violated his sense of self? She said, I, I thought you weren't here for the right reasons. Oh, what? You're telling me you don't trust me? You're telling me you don't think I'm here for the right reason? What is it? Ego. It's my ego. It's my sense of self. It's not evil. It's not evil. It's just that we defend ourselves because we have this concept of ourselves in our mind, this thought self, the energy self, and we put so much emphasis on what other people think about us. Sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that what they think about us is the most important thing deep down. If you, had, if you can admit the truth, is that we view other people's viewpoint of us as being more important than our viewpoint of ourselves. When you can let that go, you can start being free from falling into these fights. You become argument resistant. When you let go of the over-the-top emphasis on what someone else is thinking about you, when you let go of caring so much about someone else's perception of you, then when they say something that's off about you, it doesn't hurt as much. You have to let go of worrying about how they're viewing you. And this is easier said than done because it's when it's your close family member or loved one or friend or coworker, you care what they think, but you have to let go of caring so much about what they think. As long as a person defends themselves, they will have a fight. So here's the key to never getting in a fight. Never defend yourself. I can hear through the Zoom some of you screaming like, no, how am I supposed to go through life without defending myself? That's crazy. If you want the key to never getting into a fight or an argument with your loved one or your spouse or whomever is accusing you and blaming you and saying things, never defend yourself. It is an inevitability that people will make statements and judgments about you that will be untrue. You will face that your entire life. You will be 80 years old and somebody in your nursing home will still say something to you or about you. It's a part of life. People are going to make judgments and assertions that indicates that they have a perception of you that doesn't represent who you truly are. And that can hurt. But as long as you don't defend yourself, you're not in an argument. Period. Try to argue with me while I don't defend myself. Roman, you are a monster. That may be true. No, I mean it. You're, you're, the wor you're the worst. You're about as bad as they come. I didn't know that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. No, I'm not playing. Are you playing with me right now? Because I'm not playing right now. No, I'm serious. I never knew that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. You cannot argue with someone who doesn't defend themselves. If you drop the need to defend, you will not be in an argument. Two people who are opposed to one another, then they can have conflict. When we become one with everyone, like what Buddha talks about, whereas all humanity is, is one with one another, when you think in terms of becoming one with your spouse, then you eliminate the opposition the clashing of one another. 
So instead of they have their viewpoint and their stance and what they say, and I have mine, when you seek to become one with them, you can no longer have an argument with them. This absolutely works 100%. You have to em embrace the fact that arguing is maladaptive, meaning it never works or just about hardly ever works. It's a very rare situation that you will yell at someone like this and they will literally be like, oh, wow. Yeah, you have a point. <laughs> Thank you so much for pointing out my flaw. Thank you. I, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you for yelling louder than me. Thank you for interrupting what I was saying. Like, if you wouldn't interrupt me, I would just be lost right now. It doesn't work. You have to embrace that simple fact. Arguing doesn't work. So you have to abandon that strategy because it doesn't work. It will never get you anywhere. It doesn't work. Arguing with someone, yelling back and forth is fruitless. It is pointless. In a very, very rare situation would the other person actually concede in, in the midst of an embroiled argument, especially when tensions are high, when emotions are high. So you have to accept the fact that arguments don't work. The biggest problem with arguments is that they separate you from being united with the person. When you are united with the person, then you can't have an argument, right? So when you both agree that the Bears are the best football team, then there's no argument, right? So you have to seek to not defend the self, but to find common ground with the other person. This isn't easy when they come after your character, but remember, you are made up. Your values are what you're made up of, the self. When they attack your values, it's natural that you're going to feel a pain of anger or distress. In one twelfth of a second, your subconscious mind sends a signal to you that you are in danger. And it's talking about the metaphysical self. The physical self is usually in these situations not actually in danger. The metaphysical self is in danger. So you're getting a signal. The anger is a signal coming from the brainstem, the animal brain, saying, whoa, someone just violated you. What are you going to do? The answer, nothing. If you are in safety, you do not need to fight. Fighting is only something you need to do in an emergency situation when you or someone else is in actual immediate danger and there is no escape. Fighting should be very, very rare. So when you recognize, okay, if I'm just like in the situation that we just watched, there's nothing to fight about. There's actually nothing for them to fight about. They both love each other. They were not in any danger. They were out there in public. They were just sitting up against a railing. She wasn't in danger. He wasn't in danger. But that's not the, the emotion that comes. So if you don't listen to the emotion and you pause for seven seconds and allow the conscious self to come online, then you can start thinking in the conscious self and you can remember these strategies. You remember, if I don't defend myself, there's no argument. Truth of the matter is it takes two. There is no argument that takes only one. It doesn't happen. My wife argued with me today. Oh, she's so horrible. <laughs> you guys had an argument. It takes two. There is no one argument, one person argument. It takes two. The moment you withdraw from the argument by not defending the self, the argument is gone. So how can you do this exactly? Well, I'm going to give you a toolbox of how you can actually have a discussion with someone who's coming at you with accusations, inviting remarks, and saying things to you that really, really boil you up. It's going to be a toolbox you can use to avoid all arguments. I'll pull up my share screen so you can read the toolbox with me. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, uh, write me a message, let me know. So here's your diffuse argument toolbox. 
So I have 10 tools that I'm going to give you here that you can use to diffuse any argument at any time. You stay within these 10 tools. You do not deviate from your 10 tools and you will not get in an argument. Remember, the argument occurs when you begin to defend yourself. That's when there's an argument, not when someone accuses you. There's no argument. So if someone says, Roman, I think you're a racist. That's not an argument. It only becomes an argument when I say, no, I'm not. Or when I say, well, actually, you could use to lose a few pounds. Then, then we have an argument, you see. But that's maladaptive. Is that helpful? No. How will it end? And two people mad. I will have never made my point doing that. So what you want to do is use these tools. So here, here's tool number one. You want to point out what's true about what they're saying. So let's say I'm not cheating. And my wife says, I know you're cheating. I can just tell. I can just sense it. That's a tough one, right? The feeling I feel inside is like I want to defend myself. In fact, I'm insulted that she would think that about me. But if I use my toolbox here and I use tool number one, I have to find something that's true about what she said. How can I do that? What's true about the sense that she can feel that I'm cheating? Well, her feelings are true. I'm not cheating, but her feelings are true. So how could I respond where I point out what's true? For instance, I could say, oh my goodness. Well, definitely you're sensing something. And whatever it is, it has you alarmed. I'm so sorry to hear. I'm so sorry to hear that you don't trust me and that I haven't earned your trust. Now, I've pointed out what was true is that she feels something. Apparently, you feel something and it's very strong. Pointed out what was true. What's another example where you could point out what, what's true about the person? Someone could say, you're really messy. You could say, you know, you're right. I am really messy. Just find something that's true about it. Someone could say, you don't ever take out the garbage. Well, that's probably an exaggeration. But instead of saying, that's an exaggeration. No, I just point out what's true. I did fail to take out the garbage today. That is true. You're right. You understand how to use that tool? Good. Tool number two, agree with what you can. Like I said, you're right that I did fail to take out the garbage yesterday. And there's been other times that I failed to take out the garbage, maybe times that I forgot. Agree with what you can. You sense that I'm cheating? Well, I can definitely agree that I, I would never want to give you that feeling. And I can agree that you must be feeling something. Agree what you can. This takes brain work. It takes practice, you know. It requires a high IQ to be able to find an argument against your own perception, to, to find an argument that's against what you believe. But with what, whatever the person's saying, this process of validating their feelings diffuses the argument. It also is really hard for them to keep getting madder when you keep agreeing with them and being on their team. Well, you're right. I, I don't help out enough around the house. Find something you can agree with. Tool number three, share vulnerable feelings. Now here it gives me an opportunity to assert something, but instead of asserting how wrong they are, how right I am, and, 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 and how much I hate them or any of that stuff, I'm going to go to the vulnerable emotions. It would sound something like this. Wow. I feel really embarrassed. Wow. That's scary. Mm, that hurts. Oh my gosh. That hurts so much to know you feel that way. All right. So now you can round out these three tools. So, so my wife says, Roman, you're cheating. I know you're cheating. And I say, oh, apparently you're feeling something. Whatever it is, it must be very real for you right now. 
I'm so sorry to know that you're feeling this way. It makes me feel so embarrassed to know that I failed to make you feel safe and to make you know how much you can trust me. It hurts me to know that you would think something like that about me. I stated my feelings. I pointed out what was true. I've agreed with what I can. Tool number four, discuss only their point. Don't fall into the trap because you may be married to or sitting across from an expert arguer. An expert arguer will sense that you're not arguing with them and they're really riled up to have an argument. So they'll draw you into the argument by using questions. And so they'll say, well, okay, you say you feel upset right now or you feel hurt right now. Why do you feel hurt? Hmm. That's a trick question there, isn't it? Because they're asking you to defend your emotion. But one of your tools, tool number four, is that you discuss only their point. So I can say, yes, I do feel hurt. And I feel hurt to know that, that you view me this way. But I want to focus on how you're feeling right now. How are you feeling going through this? You must feel very distrustful. You must feel very hurt yourself. I can tell that you feel angry. So I turn it back around and I make sure I discuss only their point, only their side of the story. I'm not going to come with my defense or my side of the story, even though they're asking me for it. Okay, well, what's your excuse? What do you have to say for yourself? Tell me what happened then. You know what? I, I appreciate what you're saying right now, but this is a really big moment because I can tell that, that you're really upset. So I want, I want to make sure we figure out what's going on here with your feelings before we move on to talking about my feelings. So, so let's, let's discuss how you're feeling right now. So you said that you feel like I've cheated. What's making you feel that way? We're focusing only on their point. It's a trap to go off into defending yourself because you'll start trying to explain your viewpoint. You'll be like, man, I've been doing this. I've been doing that. And they're going to interrupt you. And, and they're going to interrupt you with an insult. And the insult is going to make you want to defend yourself more. And then you get in an argument. Don't defend yourself. And you're not in an argument. Tool number five, take as much responsibility as possible. Well, you know, apparently I have not been making you feel loved enough around here. I really need to improve. You think you could give me the opportunity over the next couple of weeks to try to show you more how much I love you and to prove to you that you're the number one person in my life? So now I've taken this ridiculous assertion and by taking responsibility, I found a way to empower myself to use this as an opportunity to improve my relationship. These conflicts are opportunities. They're expressing something from their heart, from their mind. And even if it's disordered, even if it's totally off base, even if it's wrong, by taking responsibility, as much responsibility as you can, you're turning it into an opportunity to improve yourself, to improve the relationship, to possibly make them feel good. The reality is sometimes they do have a point. Sometimes somewhere in there, there is something. Maybe, even though my wife isn't, is not saying it right to say, I believe you're cheating, that's a little extreme, but maybe there really is something. Maybe I'm, I'm not showing her enough affection. Maybe there's something there. And if I'm busy trying to defend myself, I will miss it. And I will miss the opportunity. And if we have a hundred of these arguments and that hundred turns into a thousand, the relationship will end badly. But I can save all of that and their emotions and everything by not defending myself, but instead by using tool number five, taking as much responsibility as possible. Here's tool number six, repeat their point back to them in your own words. This is a great way to show you're listening. So what I hear you saying is, that's how you repeat someone's point back to them. Let me just make sure I understand. So what I hear you saying is, because I didn't 
were because I looked at my friend's text messages during the party at your parents' house, you felt like I was here for the wrong reasons. Is that correct? And they'll let you know. Yeah, that's right. Or no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. And then you repeat back to them again. Okay, so then what you're saying is, because I did this, A, B, C. Is that right? And they'll say, yes. Or they'll say, no, it's A, B, C. Keep repeating back to them in your own words what they're saying to you to show that you're listening and to actually come to a clear understanding. Number seven, show empathy. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine how that would feel. Wow. You really are brave to have to deal with that. It hurts me to know you're hurt. Empathy is their pain in your body. So I want you to connect to, to their pain because wherever they're coming from with this accusation, nine times out of 10 is some source of fear, some source of anxiety, some source of, source of pain. So we should feel empathetic toward them. Tool number eight, stroke their ego. Dear, for you to step up to me and express to me that you believe I'm cheating, that takes bravery. There's a lot of wives out there, if they believe their husband was cheating, they'd be afraid to even speak up. I'm so glad to see that you have the strength to be able to speak up to me about what you're feeling and what you're thinking. I'm so happy to know that you feel strong enough. You should be proud that you're able to stand up for yourself in a situation where you feel like you're being violated. You see what I'm doing there? Stroking the ego. It may seem kind of insincere, but one way or another, what it is not is an argument. When you stroke someone's ego and you tell them that, that they're brave for speaking out against you, it's very disarming. To be seen so fully like that, nine times out of 10, if you're sitting across from a good person, they're going to apologize to you for the way they came at you. When you disarm them like that, if they're a good person, they're going to say, you know what? Thank you. I am. I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. And, and, and you guys are going to figure it out and it's going to be beautiful and you're going to move on. Nothing can get accomplished in an argument. So I don't, I don't, there's no point on trying that. So as hard as these methods are and as much practice as they may take, it's worthwhile to be able to walk through life virtually impervious to people's attempts to, to start drama or an argument with you. So don't be afraid to build them up, to stroke their ego. Tool number nine, take their side. You're right. I am an idiot sometimes. Find something you can agree with. You're right. We're not doing enough stuff together. You're right. I shouldn't go out with my friends so much. <laughs> Take their side. And then finally, apologize for what you can. You know, I'm so sorry to know that, that I haven't been able to make you feel differently than you feel right now. I'm so sorry to hear that you're going through what you're going through. Understanding how to apply these tools makes you powerful. The irony of arguing is that people think that they're being powerful to fight. But remember, you're fighting with your own loved one. If that's the person you're married to, you're supposed to be one flesh. If that's your best friend, you guys are supposed to be BFFs, best friends forever. By arguing with them, you're just alienating, you're separating yourself from them, and you're ultimately not furthering the bond of connection. There will be an opportunity for you to be able to share your feelings and make your point. It will not be while you're both angry and it will not be while they're trying to make a point. So save whatever your point is for another time. And maybe in another workshop, I can show you how to make a point to someone without starting an argument. But for today, understand this, to win an argument, you have to be willing to lose. And what I mean by that is instead of grandstanding and standing up by taking this lower position and showing this humility, you're actually winning because you avoided the argument to, be, to begin with and you win peace, love, joy, connection, 
in everything that life is really about.